Samsung EX2F review. And action. Samsung. You know they make smartphones, TVs, home appliances, and various other electronics. But did you know they made cameras as well? Like this, the Samsung EX2F from 2012. Hi, my name's Steve, welcome back to the channel. Now today, we're going to do a little bit of a review of this little camera from 2012. Now, I've had it in my possession for a couple of months now, and I've taken quite a few images with it. I've also taken some video samples. I've also done a video test on it, which I posted a few weeks ago. Now, I just want to talk about the camera in general and show you some images from um, my experience shooting with this. Now, it does have a small sensor in it, um, typical of most modern smartphones, which is a 1 over 1 inch, sorry, it's a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, which is 7.44 by 5.58 millimeters. Um, so it's pretty small, but because of the optics on this, it delivers way better image quality than your typical smartphone. Now if I power it on, but you get a little zoom rocker here. Come on, focus on it. Thank you. And zoom in slowly and then back out. So it doesn't have a massive zoom range, but it's equivalent to 24 to 80 millimeters in full frame terms. Now because of the optics in it, like I said, it does, does deliver way better image quality than your typical smartphone. So the lens has a very bright aperture range from 1.4 to 2.7 at the long end. Now that lets in way more light onto that small sensor than most smartphones. As you can see by the size of the, the lens, the optics in it, see that hopefully you can see that well enough way bigger lens elements than than most smartphones or well, pretty much all smartphones really now it has quite a few premium features on it now it does have a PASM dial on it which most compact cameras cheap compact cheap compact cameras don't so you've got all the different modes on there through from um, video to manual, shutter speed, shutter priority, I should say, and so on. Also does have a, a smart mode, which is like your typical auto mode on most cameras anyway. Now also above that, as you can see there next to that, there's a dial for your continuous shooting modes, bracketing, and what have we got? Self-timer as well. So you've got all those sort of options on a dial, on a dedicated dial. Now that little blue ring there, there's your on off switch. So you push it in, turn it off. Push it in, turn it on. So it, go, it does fire up pretty quick. I'll show you what I mean. So if I push the button, bang, it's up and ready within a couple of seconds to go. Now it also does have pop-up flash for when you're in darker situations and you've also got come on focus thank you a hot shoe mount on there so you can put like a flash unit on there you can also put a EVF which apparently you can buy online somewhere according to the manual 
but I haven't been able to track one down. I haven't seen anything like that. But um, yeah, that will give you an optional EVF to shoot through. Now, also, it does have an articulating screen. So you can switch it around and then turn it back in on itself. Now it also does have a front dial. I hope you can see that well enough. Not sure if you can. But it's a little dial for changing different parameters. Let me just turn it on. If I turn that dial, the exposure compensation changes, as you can see by the picture. If I hit it again, the aperture changes. Hope you can see that well. So that's pretty, pretty good feature on a small little compact camera like that. You've also got your dial around the back of the screen on the back panel to change different parameters as well, which also the four-way mode switch on here for different things like flash and so on. So you've got your menu button up there and also a function menu button. So if I hit the function menu, it brings up all that, all that information on there and you can go through different settings and change different controls. So you've got a macro mode on there as well. So that there is set on to AF. And if I go over to macro mode, you can put it into macro setting as well. So that's quite handy. So it's got a few, quite a few different premium features on it that most point and shoots don't have. Now, the size of this camera is 112 millimeters wide, uh, 62 millimeters high, and 29 millimeters deep when, when the lens is retracted in there because that will extend out a little bit when you turn it on. But you can quite easily put that into your pocket. Not a tight jeans pocket, but you could put it on into a pocket, even a jacket pocket, sweatshirt pocket. And it weighs in at 294 grams, which is pretty light. And that's battery and memory card included in there. As for the handling of it, um, I found it I found it pretty good. Um, not nearly as good as like um, some of the like APS-C cameras that have got uh, a bit bigger grip on them. But then again, like I say, it is a point and shoot, and it's not meant to have a big huge grip on it. It's um, designed to be small and lightweight and um, pocketable basically. But I tell you what, it at 294 grams, it feels solid. It feels well put together. I'm not sure what all the materials are and I haven't actually gone into all that yet, but um, it doesn't feel like cheap plastic, that's for sure. It feels pretty premium sort of uh, materials used in this. So it does feel very well made and I expect it would last a long time. I mean, it's lasted, it's now 13 years old, sorry. It is now 11 years old. So it's lasted pretty well. Um, it still gets pretty good image quality out of it. So um, the battery life, I haven't tested the battery life on it either um, because I've only just been shooting now and again with it. I haven't really extensively tested it um, to see how many shots you can get out of it. But um, for casual shooting, um, I think it would be fine. It would be pretty fine with that. But yeah, that's an interesting little camera from Samsung. So if you're in the market for a cheap, pocketable, premium camera, um, if you see one of these on the market, I would encourage you to buy it. At a good price, I think it's well worth it. I think it's um, it's got good enough image quality that it would beat like smartphones of today, most smartphones today. So my overall thoughts of this little camera. In terms of value for money on the second hand market, obviously, um, it's pretty good value. If you can find one for less than $100 New Zealand, um, you're doing pretty well. And I think it's well worth 
paying up to $100 or so for one of these compact cameras because it does give you a lot more functionality over the typical um, point and shoot from the day. So you've got way more control, you can adjust a lot more parameters on it uh, if you want to get a bit more creative, especially with that 1.4 aperture. Oh, by the way, because of that 1.4 aperture and the maximum shutter speed of 1 over 2,000th of a second, it does have a built-in ND filter. So you can switch that ND filter on through the function menu and you can um, overcome the harsh light um, from the limitations of the, both the shutter speed and if you want to um, reduce your depth of field and um, be a bit more creative in bright light, you can do that with this sort of camera. But I think that's all I've got for you today. So um, I hope you like the short little review uh, and also check out the video samples I posted a few weeks ago and see what you think of the video that's come out of this as well. So uh, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.